Hi, and welcome to Bio 101, Introduction to Biology. This is the first chapter. We're going to talk about some basic themes of science and of biology. So to start out, um, we have to ask the big question, what is biology? And biology is the study of living organisms. Um, and living organisms are broken up into several categories. The largest grouping is called domain. Um, so we have three major domains of life. We have two domains that are um, single-celled, the bacteria and the archaea. Um, you can see those at the top, um, and those are going to be single-celled organisms. They are um, structurally a lot more simple than the third domain at the bottom, which is the eukaryotes, meaning having a nucleus. Um, and the domain eukarya is broken up into plants, fungi, animals, and protists. The plants get their food by photosynthesis. Animals get their food by ingesting it and digesting it internally. Fungi get their food by decomposing um, organic material outside of their body, so they don't take it in until after it's digested. And the protists are all the other multicellular and some single-celled organisms that are sort of left over. So the protists are an artificial grouping um, of everything else, which includes algae and amoebas um, and many other groups. So what are the things in biology that tie it all together? The first big idea in biology that links every field, if it's medicine, paleontology, um, any field you can think of, epidemiology, molecular biology, and that's the idea of evolution. Um, evolution is just the process of change, and you might ask, what is changing? Well, individuals can't change. I can't change my genetic makeup. I was born with what I have. but over time, a population's genetic structure can change, and some traits can become more abundant, and other traits can become less abundant. And that's the basic idea behind evolution. Um, and as I said, every field of biology uses the idea of evolution to help inform it and to make new research. The next big idea is um, the idea of energy and matter. Matter is the physical substance that makes us up. Energy is the, uh, the stuff that allows us to do all the processes that we need to do. So in an ecosystem or in your body or on the planet Earth, the way life works is we're able to utilize energy from our environment. If it's from sunlight like plants or from food like us, we use that energy, we extract it from wherever we get our energy and we're able to use it to build up our bodies or maintain our bodies and it allows us to maintain an equilibrium called homeostasis. A good example of homeostasis is your body temperature. Your temperature should be a little bit over 98 degrees and if you go above that you will start to sweat and if you go below that you'll start to shiver. Sweating and shivering are ways to bring your body temperature back to that 98.6 degrees that allows our bodies to work the way they need to. Um, those mechanisms that keep our body in homeostasis are called feedback mechanisms, and you'll be doing an activity about feedback. The next big idea is the idea of DNA. Um, DNA is a language written on the molecule of DNA that your cells can read and they transfer that information um, into proteins and they can transmit that information to their offspring. So living systems are able to store information in DNA, retrieve it, um, express genes, basically that means read the DNA and turn it into a physical protein. Um, and all life on Earth uses the same language to do this. 
DNA then gets packaged around proteins called histones that you can see at the bottom. The histones wind up into a large package called a chromosome. So DNA is the physical substance, a chromosome is a package, and a gene is what's written on that substance. The next big idea is that biological systems interact with each other. So your cells go together to build tissues and tissues go together to build organ systems. So your heart is a lot of cells. Some of them are muscle cells. Some of, their, some of them are connective tissue. And all of those things work together for one function and that is to pump blood and that's an organ. All your organs go together into organ systems and makes you an organism. So as you can see, the example on the slide here shows um, plant cells forming plant tissues, which form a leaf. A leaf is an organ. All the leaves and bark and wood go together to make a maple tree that you can see there, a single organism. All the maple trees are a population. Different species live together. So the maple trees, the oak trees, the ferns, the deer, the insects, all of those populations form a community. And then we go out even farther and now we're including the living and non-living things. And that makes an ecosystem, a system of many processes interacting and working together. And then finally, the highest level is the biosphere, all life on Earth. All of these parts of interactions make a hierarchy. Basically, it's levels of um, complexity. And as you go up in complexity, properties start to emerge that maybe you wouldn't expect. For example, if you looked at a simple plant cell, you might not be able to uh, predict the complexity that the entire ecosystem has. So those things are called emergent properties. And emergent properties are not just special to life, but almost everything. If you look at the parts of a bicycle, a spoke isn't much. But when the spoke goes onto the wheel and the wheel goes onto the frame, they all go together to build this thing that's much more than the sum of its parts. So that's the idea behind emergent properties. So, those are our big themes of biology. Um, and biology is the study of life. So, what is life? Well, life is not a simple thing to define. If you ask yourself, if I went to a distant planet and found something laying on a rock and asked, is it alive? It's not a simple thing to answer. We can look around and say, yeah, there's life, but is it alive? Um, so scientists have to come up with a lot of different explanations to say if something is alive or not. Um, life is more about what things do than what they are. So the first property of life is order. And order... Hmm. is something that all life has in common. Order is a basic organization of things. The second property is going to be adaptation. All living things are adapted to their environments. Um, and over time, as environments change, they become more and more adapted to them. The third property of life is going to be regulation. We talked about homeostasis. Well, homeostasis is a form of regulation. So the picture of the rabbit is showing that it's able to get rid of excess heat with its large ears and keep its body temperature low in a hot desert environment. The next property of life is going to be reproduction. 
Um, all living things can make a copy of themselves. Living things are able to um, process energy. That one's pretty self-explanatory. All living things are able to grow, add molecules to their body to heal and to get larger, things like that. And all living things are able to respond to their environment in one way or another. You might not think of a tree as being able to respond, but it does. It responds to the seasons. It responds to changing light conditions, to changing water conditions. So life is not what is not a simple one word answer. There's actually seven categories or seven properties that it takes for things to be alive. So life is recognized by what they do, not what they are. You need all seven of those things to be considered alive. And that's the end. There's a turtle that's dressed up like a stegosaurus.